gaslighting's no joke, you guys. It is probably one of the most confusing manipulation tactics that creates the most sense of need to engage with it from the person on the receiving end. So if you're being gaslit, the urge to respond to it, to correct the weird, twisted reality, to defend yourself, all of that is really strong. Once a person who is gaslighting you has started down the road of gaslighting, the chances of them stopping and going, oh, you're right, I'm telling a lie, or this isn't the reality, you're right, is pretty slim, especially if they're narcissistic or toxic in any way. They're using it, right? It's a tool to avoid the truth, to avoid accountability, to twist realities to get their way, to control you, and to, you know, anything manipulative. It's a very manipulative tactic. It is complete dismissal of a reality twisting it into a new reality. And a lot of times, if a narcissist is caught doing something, they will use gaslighting to convince you you're crazy so that they can dismiss the thing that happened and make the thing that happened because of you, something about you. And it could be the strangest thing that they're saying it is your fault for. And the thing is, you've invested in the relationship. You've invested in the discussion or argument and having your truth be what's in the forefront, right? You don't want to be lied about. You don't want the words twisted and you've invested in it. You are now part of the dynamic with them. That's what they want. They want to hook you in. And they do that in the beginning by either seeming to listen to you, by engaging in an argument that's very attacking, you know, by basically provoking you. Once they've provoked you and they've pulled you out of that and they've thrown you into fight flight, right? Because it's tumultuous and it's it's provoking. So once you're there, then they can often just sit back with calm and ease and twist things around so you get reactive. When you're reactive to the gaslighting, it can turn into all kinds of things. It can turn into shutdown, dissociation, crying, taking the blame. It can turn into reactivity, yelling and screaming, cussing them out, physically going after them, throwing something, things that are out of your nature even. It can turn into reactive abuse, right? Once you've reached your max. And it can get even worse the more you understand about narcissism and the more you understand about manipulation because you're like, yeah, I'm not taking that anymore. And once you have that stance, it's really important to be able to walk away when the gaslighting starts and hopefully get away from the situation altogether. Because once you've like gone past your threshold into reactive abuse, suddenly from the gaslighting, right? Suddenly you are part of the problem. You are engaged in something you wouldn't so do. And once you get to that point, they flip it. And then the gaslighting, there's a whole nother level. And why is that? Because they can't get caught being responsible for this. It, they need it to be you. Once it's accepted, once you are lost and confused and you're like, I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh my gosh, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. Once you go into, or you shut down or you're confused and you start acting like you feel like you're crazy, right? They have you in the position of ultimate control. They can control everything because see, they're afraid you're going to tell. They're afraid you're going to go out there and let people know what they're doing. So they've got to make totally sure that you're so messed up in your head that you can't even tell the story straight. And you can't tell the story without telling your part now because you've had a reaction. You see how gaslighting is like terrible, terrible to do to people and how the need for gray rock, the need for getting away from this, the need for understanding that this is not healthy communication and that you won't engage in it um, is super important and how we need to figure out a way for ourselves, each person individually, how to not be involved in situations where this is going so on. You're with right. covert narcissists or around covert narcissists and they are gaslighting you. It comes at the strangest time over the most benign disagreements and everything turns into a pouting match and a need to dominate. Does that make sense? Like there is a need for them to dominate the energy, for them to dominate the whole thing and twist it into something. Even people who are covert narcissists who are not necessarily 
the yelling, screaming type. They're more like happy-go-lucky in the rest of their life where people think they're nice guys or whatever. There's this need to dominate and control. And when it doesn't happen instantaneously, even when it does happen, they have to push into it with this gaslighting and make sure that your reality is invalidated. The truth is, if, if you see this over and over as a pattern, it's time to reevaluate this relationship, friendship, or whatever it is. It's time to evaluate what you want for your life and the types of interactions you want with others. And get really clear with yourself on how you're going to move forward with that. Is this time for you to leave? Is this time for you to back way off to low contact? Is this time to set some boundaries about the types of things you'll communicate about? Are you going to stay? And if so, what's the relationship going to look like? Because this can't keep going on, right? How are you going to, obviously you can't engage in it. You can't, once someone starts gaslighting, like I said, they're not going to stop. They're going to keep gaslighting until you're in a state of befuddlement, confusion, submission, 